speak to Steve McCary. I swear I did for the last half hour in his office. Okay, I'm going to convene this meeting of the Ojai Building Appeals Board. It's called to order on Wednesday, October 10, 2018 at 6 p.m., actually 6.02, in the Council Chambers of Ojai City Hall at 401 South End Tourist Street, Ojai, California. Um, members of the public wishing to address the Building Appeals Board on items appearing on the agenda are requested to complete a speaker's card and file it with a secretary prior to the start of the meeting. Cards are available in the lobby. Speakers should state their name and address for the record and limit your comments to three minutes or less, although we're usually not too terribly stringent about that at this board. Comments must be directed to the board, uh, not to the audience if there is one. While the Building Appeals Board is in session, all in attendance are expected to maintain order and decorum, and that includes the board members, and to obey the orders of the chairs. I don't know so much about the last part. Uh, can we have a roll call, please? Yes, the Chair Ulrich. Here. Uh, member Daddy. Partially here. Member Murphy. Here. Member Farmer. Here. And myself. Okay, Pledge of Allegiance. Um, board Member Farmer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America. 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 and to the Republic for which it stands. It's very efficient. Um, okay, uh, public communications is the time set aside during the Building Appeals Board meeting for members of the public to address the Building Appeals Board on items of city business other than scheduled agenda items. Matters raised at this time may be briefly discussed by the board it will generally be referred to staff and or placed on a subsequent agenda. Under state law, other than for emergency items, no action or on non-agendized items can be taken at this meeting. Are there any uh, speaker communications cards? Okay. Building officials report. Is there one? No, there's no report. Okay. Um, first uh, and only consent item are the minutes of the... Building Appeals Board meeting of August 29, 2018. Any comments, reservations, or exceptions? Okay, so we're going to consider that to be by uh, okay submitted. All right, um, and received. All right, uh, item number two, discussion item, review of the list of Building Appeals Board's recommendations pending City Council review. Um, there's a recommendation that the Building Appeals Board review the list of BAB recommendations pending review by City Council, add, remove, or modify items on the list, and then approve forwarding to the of the list to City Council. So, I'll open that up for uh, discussion. Can I give a staff report? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to add that um, the. Um, we are tentatively scheduled to return back to council at the first meeting in November with the Title IX and building code updates. Um, and so the kind of the goal that I was working towards with um, this item in this list was to get the list finalized and everything together to all come back to council at that time. And so it's um, scheduled for, like I said, the first meeting in November. And um, we had the list of six additional recommendations and my thought is we'd include this you know this um, exact uh, document pending any modifications or additions or removals so You know, when we speak amongst us, not on our mic, the people at home are totally lost. They have no clue what we're doing. It aggravates the hell out of me. So maybe we could in include the, the public.
comments that I made during the public comment session last night at the city council meeting. Um, uh, Dale was there, present, I don't know if, uh, and I think Bob um, perhaps saw some of it on the... Uh, um, all of it. Okay, all of it on, on a video feed, uh, but I'm going to, I'd like to uh, include those comments since that pertains to specifically this item uh, and some of the, um, at least some of the items contained in this item. Um, <coughs> Five points, two questions. One, the Ojai Building Appeals Board has completed the five tasks assigned by the City Council on July 17th of 2017. Number two, the deliverables for this assignment were agendized for the BAB in August of 2017 and began to be completed and delivered to city staff in February of 2018. Three, as of this meeting, and as that was of the meeting last night, and that would be also appropriate for this meeting, um, council has not been presented, nor has council requested for review, for their review and discussion, any of this building appeals board work product. Number four, at the August 8, 2018 building appeals board meeting, and as the building appeals board completed its final review of Title IX, staff informed the building appeals board that prior to presentation to the council, the city attorney would, quote, need to review, unquote, the building appeal board's recommended Title IX revisions, deletions, and adjustments. Question, when will the city attorney make this review so that his comments can be, in turn, reviewed by the building appeals board prior to their presentation of the building appeals board's work product to city council? Item five, in December 2017, two weeks after the start of the Thomas fire, the Building Appeals Board conducted a hearing with Cal Fire and Ventura County Fire Department and fire prevention participating and subsequently completed a wholesale revision for the City of Ojai Fire Map in part in response to the Thomas Fire. This revision was executed by members of the Building Appeals Board with full knowledge at that time that Cal Fire would not be producing a revision to the Cal Fire Ojai Fire Map in 2019 or any time soon thereafter. This map was uh, voted on, was presented before this board and was voted on to be forwarded to the council for their consideration. Question, when will the council review and discuss and adopt an updated and more accurate OHI fire map as recommended by the Building Appeals Board by resolution on 9 May 2018? In short, if the council assigned the Building Appeals Board these tasks, why isn't the council interested in the result? Um, having said that, um, does anyone have any comments? Because I have more. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it, it re references the, the uh, actual art, attachment A. So, um, I think that's what we're here to con consider. So, okay, okay, you want to? Um, uh, these are my, would be my proposed edits. Uh, item one, the recommendation that city council adopt updates to the city's municipal code focused on Title IX building regulations, but also including some updates to Title X planning and zoning and Title VII public works. This was at the August 29, 2018 building appeals board meeting. Um, I would submit that um, recommended revisions um, used in lieu of updates um, in both of the updates in that first and second line. Um, uh, okay, yeah. subsection A, status. The Building Appeals Board began review of Title IX in June 2018. The board completed a review on August 29. Staff is reviewing and preparing staff report for council. The Building Appeals Board recommendation. You know, I didn't have my microphone on will be attached to the staff report for presentation to council. Um, do we have a, uh, a take, however, on the city attorney review? Has it been submitted to the city attorney for his review? So 
Uh, yeah, I uh, wanted to clarify a couple Will of it? of points. Um, it has been uh, sent. Tom and, and the city attorney have talked about a couple of the um, items in the review um, are in the um, update. But I do want to clarify, it's not that the city attorney is going to draft and, you know, uh, here's my word for word or, you know, arguments for or against. Um, and I hope I didn't give that impression. What we're planning to do is we would have a staff report, have the BABS recommendations. Um, as part of the staff report, we explain some of the concerns or, you know, positives or, or negatives. Some of the things we've talked about um, already, all the fire safety things, I think we've, we're all in agreement on, and it would include that recommendation from staff as well. But isn't that, a, that's one of the other items. But it's also part of the um, Title 10 and Building Code. What, some of the things I'd want to emphasize is the impact on fire safety that those changes would have. Um, but there are some that I, you know, we talked about that I said I wouldn't recommend. and. Um, uh, but again, your recommendation will be there, and then. But I just, I personally, and I'll probably be the person drafting it, would not recommend uh, things like uh, we had talked about changing the timeline for the appeal process, which I had said at the time I had some concerns about. So that would be the product that would come to council. So it's not waiting or being delayed by the city attorney at this point. The city attorney is um, has a copy of it that he will review and he will probably speak to at the council meeting. It, um, it really, it's it's been scheduled for that November meeting. Um, the report, uh, I'm, we're preparing it right now, so there's not really anything pending on it other than I just, you know, am trying to get it all on paper. Um, and so I just wanted to make sure that was clear because I, I know the um, understand, or yesterday it's kind of sounded like the statement was that the city attorney's holding this up and that's just not what's occurring right now. He's just uh, going to do his own uh, review yes. and comments. So. Yes, sure. uh, James, um, are you the staff member that will be presenting to uh, City Council? So it'll probably be myself and Tom, and Tom. Uh, the building official. Um, that's what I'm expecting. I'm sure the city manager and the city attorney will provide input, but I would ex <laughs> I'm moving forward with the plan that Tom and I are going to draft it and present it. So on the area where you disagree, what was on the timeline of appeals? That, that was one example, yeah. Uh -huh. There will be other things that you will not agree with what we came up with? Uh, yeah, I think we, dis like we discussed all of them during the process. I think it was yeah. a pretty good, good discussion, and there were things where we ended up saying, oh, I see your point. Mm -hmm. But there was one, you know, the appeal is just the one that jumps to mind where I was saying that really put a uh, stress on, on staff, and I could see an issue where one like last year during the fire falls through the cracks or gets delayed a couple of weeks. So there's just certain things that, again, your recommendation will be attached verbatim. And then, but I would say, you know, here's a couple of things that, that I have concerns with for the council. To so you will make a distinction between mm -hmm. the two. Okay, yeah, and we'll, we'll make that clear uh, of these are the, um, you know, the things staff completely supports, maybe things that there's um, just, you know, slight, uh, you know, distinctions, and then and then the ones like that that I just have okay. bigger concerns about. Thank you, Jim. I have a question. Has the has the mayor had a chance to review any of what we've recommended at all? Uh, uh, so offhand, the um, so remember the fire map item did come back to the full council mm -hmm. for review, and the direction at that time was to was based on and you know admittedly we we're basing it on cal fire saying that they would have their new map ready this year mm -hmm. which did not end up happening um and so the direction at that time was work with cal fire in the next couple of months and bring back uh, a completed map that has didn't happen and hasn't happened so that did get presented to council so that has not happened no and and yeah. and to be um Fair, we did come back to council a couple months ago and said, we aren't getting a solid timeline, right. so you may want to bring this back. So the council had asked for that to come back. And, you know, um, I think for us, we were, or I'll speak for myself, but with preparing the Title IX update and the building code update and knowing that, you know, those were going to be coming back soon, I started trying to line everything up to go at the same time, which, um, you know, maybe wasn't the best. It, 
can can we is there any way to light a fire in California? I mean, we're coming up <laughs> in to December again. We're gonna have one in a few minutes. It'll be Santa Ana winds, they'll be busy again <laughs> and they won't be looking at the map. You know, I do think one of the big things I want to emphasize in the staff report with these is that the big concern driving this for I think everybody, including the BAB staff, planning commission has weighed in on some of these uh, topics, the council is fire safety and fire prevention. And so I'm gonna to try to really emphasize that and I'm sure council will talk about that as well. And um, you know, one of the goals with that is to try to make it clear to all the groups that we aren't gonna you know, rest on our laurels while we're waiting for this. And um, you know, we're also doing a lot of, um, we're doing a couple of fire safety uh, drills that we're planning now for November and December. So we're trying to just make fire safety a, a bigger issue mm -hmm. for the city okay. and the, the whole area. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Um, well, <clears throat> first, uh, I'd like to, uh, I'm, I'm not, um, matter of fact, I'm not a fan, nor am I, matter of fact, I characterize myself as, as opposed to cl bunching and clustering things because not only does it become a, a even more daunting task but it inevitably delayed and from a construction perspective you early start everything that you can even if it's somewhat in, in immature as far as early premature but so this um, four excuse me um, five items of the six no, all six are bunched together. Not only is that not how it was produced, okay, so it means at least some part of this list, if not all of it, was delayed, but um, it's going to be an onerous mass of information before the city council. None of them are going to read it. Nobody's going to know really what it was except a bunch of stuff, okay, and they'll be, uh, you know, picking and choosing this, the, the stuff that's either reachable or, um, or else uh, familiar. Um, I also want to say that these staff wasn't tasked with the five tasks, enumerated tasks, shall I say. The Building Appeals Board was, and I sure don't want um, uh, basically a year's work product to be, a ta uh, excuse me, Building Appeals Board recommendation will be attached to the staff report. No, the staff report can be attached to the Building Appeal Board's recommendations because those are in response to the tasks assigned directly to it by City Council resolution. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Vega. Yeah, so what we're talking about here is more of a logistics issue in that every item on the give them agenda. one item, Mr. Vega. Just give them one, okay? Not all of these are onerous and you need to stack up on your, on your desk. At this particular point, they got nothing. Everything's been stymied. Everything's been delayed. The fire, since everybody brought up the fire map issue, the fire map issue was the folks that got presented on the council, most of them really didn't know that much about it. They, didn't, they knew we had a defective one. They weren't familiar with it. They'd been hearing about it from us for probably a year and a half, maybe two years, Bob. And then, um, and then all of a sudden they get something and, the, and, and everybody backs away as pretty much as quickly as they could. I could characterize it as very minimal um, embracing of, and, and this is produced right after, you know, the fire. I mean, you know, it, the smoke's still in the air, literally. And, um, and then it, it doesn't quite get dis displayed this, the way that we discussed it. And then um, Somebody says, gee, when is CAL FIRE actually going to deliver one so we don't have to adopt this? Um, the unfortunate aspect of that, which was part of our recommendation, our recommendation to adopt the new the city of Ojai fire map was because CAL FIRE wasn't going to update it. But more importantly, CAL FIRE had muffed it the first go round. And they had done no, nothing as far as an opportunity to update it in the intervening, what was it, 10 years? since it was initially produced. So there we are. What, it's a meaningless document because it's not accurate, as is many, 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 many things that are produced around uh, city government or state government or government in general, perhaps, um, uh, and, and large public agencies, I should say. Maybe that's more accurate. However, having said that, um, we still don't have it. It hasn't been presented. 
And the fact that it took a f couple of months to figure out that no, CAL FIRE really is, can't be more de definitive. They're probably not going to deliver it, which puts it in congruence and alignment with the Building Appeals Board's recommendation. Uh, and our own observation as a result of us having spent quite a bit of time with lots of, lots of people in, in, in blue uniforms, or sometimes green uniforms, but you know, and um, um, we're still at the same place. Um, and when uh, it comes back, uh, it's not, it, the fire map is one of the tasks, and it can't be, it can't be uh, what a, an attachment to a staff report. It's, a, it's an important document, and unfortunately, notwithstanding how the council might be feeling about it being perhaps onerous, scary, uh, what does it mean kind of thing, um, the reality of it is we were very, very fortunate, and it was just, once again, just luck that the city's uh, still here, and, uh, and uh, we prefer to keep doing what we've not, what we, what we've not been doing uh, for decades, which is really not much, if anything. We talk about it. It's a good, uh, it's a good uh, talking point. It's a good subject. But as far as actually doing anything about it, uh, or at least, and certainly, even if that, all that is is noticing the community, uh, in the event they missed it with this fire burning around them at 360 degrees, was probably, uh, you know, should have been enough. But at this particular point, for people that wanted build or develop or remodel or uh, even move into a particular area. They should know what their, their hazards are uh, and, and a document that's public and publicly readily available. So uh, that's, that's the overall thing. Uh, moving on, uh, anybody have, well, I'm gonna move on to item number two. Uh, yeah, what page are you on? You attachment A, one attachment of one? Attachment A, page one of one. It's the only one we got. Okay, when you get to item two, I do have a... Okay, I'm at uh, item two. You want to go first? Certainly. Um, I, th I think the operative thing here... Because um, actually, I do want to return back to the city attorney review. So maybe I was escaping just a moment. I'll let you collect your thoughts while I make a ahead. short comment go about ahead. the city attorney review. Um, as per my comments, um, we were advised that the city attorney would have to review our recommendations. I'm once again emphasizing that if he's not, then obviously that was a misstatement or a misapprehension of the actual situation or circumstances. Um, but uh, if the city attorney in turn is going to write an opinion on it, um, uh, I'm not going to ask whether we have any um, right to see what that is since it's about our work product. I mean, if we just have to show up at a, at a um, uh, public meeting and then co be prepared to comment as a consequence or in response to it, uh, you know, that, that I, I, we could do that. Maybe, maybe more than one of us or two of us might show up at that point just to uh, um, see what um, the city attorney has to say of it because this is now going sideways. Um, what was expressed to us and what we, how we comported ourselves relative to this work now is shifted and changed. So having said that, um, uh, I would appreciate it if that's a possibility, but uh, uh, I can understand if somebody says, well, that's, you know, it probably he's something he's going to develop just before the city council meeting anyway. And uh, if I can yeah. clarify, so yeah. the, at this point, I do not expect the city attorney to have a written opinion or anything Okay, so we'll just be, be making comments. It, it, and, and part of, I think, what maybe what, what the disconnect was when we say the city attorney was going to review view it. Um, well, there are changes, substantial changes in Title IX I, and some it, shifts from Title IX to Title X. And he, I'm sure he will have comments at the meeting and, after, and after reviewing the it. Previous city right. attorneys worked on the Ojai Municipal Code, of which Title IX and Title X are right. a part of. So, I mean, at this particular point, yeah, we were, you know, recommending the revisions of the, the, that portion of the code, so I would expect him to have some, however, okay, however, like I said, for those reasons, mm. we have a board here appointed, we kind of, you know, came to a consensus, we voted on stuff, our recommendations can be offset, can be commented upon in the staff report, but I'm not going to take it very kindly if, um, uh, it's treated like this as an attachment because 
I know how the city, how much, um, how busy the city council is, and I know that they don't have an opportunity to read everything gets in front of them, especially something dry like, like Title IX. But uh, but the uh, the issues um, are kind of uh, uh, some of them very simple. Some of them don't really involve that much, if any, change. But some of them are, and I'd like that not to be. Um, I think the efforts of the board and the recommendation of the board is, you know, here's an opportunity to change things. I mean, I, I, I want to, you know, note that the uh, planning commission has elected to have staff help with that. Um, I know from my perspective, and I think from, I'll speak for some of the members, if not all the members of the Building Appeals Board, I wind up learning quite a bit about our city's Title IX version of um, the building code, the approach to the uh, and application to the current state codes, and effectively what was on the books in Title IX of the city's municipal code. Best way to learn something is by reading it and discussing it. But if you know some folks maybe think differently and would uh, say that it's better to have somebody else do it for them and give them a report, I'm concerned that the report is what's going to get read here on what the building appeal board's work product has been, which has been a year plus out of my life and everybody else's life, okay? So I don't want it to um, be diluted, perhaps is a good word. So in any case, I'll. Perhaps what we can do, just logistically, just like with the packet here before the BAB, staff report cover sheet and attachment with, with the BAB, so or is, is uh, the BAB's recommendations. So logistically, I think what I'm hearing then is a couple of things, which is one is the first recommend or the um, second header in the in the staff report is BAB or uh, commissioner board recommendation. So one thing we can do is make that recommendation very clear that the attachment A is the complete recommendation from the BAB. And then the second thing, uh, that I'm thinking we can do, and I'm kind of thinking about this as we go, is um, keep the staff report short. I can try to keep it short and have the, uh, you know, an attachment that's the BAB recommendation and an attachment that's the staff recommendation. Although I do have to say, obviously, the city manager reviews and, and that's, you know, assuming that he is okay with that, but that's that's a way we can try to make it okay. where it's not yeah. buried or, you know. Yeah, well, I'd, and then I just say just feed it to them one item at a time because uh, that way it's not onerous on anybody. Um, and, you know, take it or leave it, deal with it, don't deal with it, um, whatever it is, uh, because that way it keeps your report a little bit shorter as well. And, you know, make it, try to make it into a uh, minimal page uh, thing here for everybody's consumption and absorption. Um, and this you know, raises and a, that way you can get over if, uh, you know if something needs to come back then the next one's there uh, to, to to submit uh, to look at as well uh, you know the way it's only an agenda item rather than uh, an agenda chapter right and so this raises a question for me and maybe this is maybe I'm, I'm maybe a split second late on on uh, trying to understand but so these items that we are reviewing this, these all the recommendations from the last um, seven months I think it's been do we want to include those separate at a separate time from the building code updates and the title nine updates should those be the focus at this time with these recommendations coming at a later time or do we want to include them all at Chair, once I'd like to answer that go ahead under item two when we go to the the line the second line from the bottom I think there's a couple of words that start this sentence or end this sentence or in the middle. Changes are interrelated. A lot of them are. And so if we give this chunk here and this chunk here and this chunk here, kind of like a, you know, serving the peas on the plate and then the mashed potatoes half an hour later and then the roast and it, it a number of these things need to be put together. And so, and I'll just give it, you know, a slight example. If we actually get into the acrylic skylights and the roof is the trigger, I really think those things need to become to be need to combine together. 
Because what we're really trying to do is make it easy for them to get the understanding of what we're trying to accomplish. Put it together in a package, make it relatively easy so they can go ahead and have an opportunity to come up with a decision. I mean, we're not writing these things. We're not invoking anything. We're not doing anything. What we've said is over the last 30 years or since 1968, we'll just say 50 years, Title IX has become a mess. It's contradictory. It is missing. It's got gaps. It becomes irrelevant. It's, it's antiquated. And so if we can put some of these things together, and again, one of the things that I think... Feel, feel I, free I'm to not, use any of his terms, his descriptors. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure who's going to be doing the selling, but when I see these things together, I mean, somebody is going to have to paint a fairly graphic picture. So when we talk about safety and we talk about fire, and then we talk about the water-wise and we're going to put a bunch of mulch which blew up against the school at Ojai Valley and destroyed it. We need to kind of be careful we don't repeat the same mistakes, that we just avoided a disaster. So, uh, you know, let's, let's give the council an opportunity to get the full picture. Some of these things are very important. Some of the things taken to Title X are irrelevant, especially if they don't show up very often and they don't speak about very many things and the sidewalk and the zoning is not going to be real important. What I think is going to be important is in 45 days, the Santa Ana winds are going to be back. We're going to have another incredibly extreme fire season. And we're not going to get any of these things implemented now. But at least we need to give the council an opportunity to start implementing things because this is going to be a repetitious. This is not a one and done. This is going to be every September, October, November, December, probably forever. Who knows? Maybe it runs into January and February. Maybe it is 12 months a year. But we've overlooked a lot of things for a long time with the wood roofs and a bunch of other items that really should be mitigated. The other thing that is not in here because it's really not our charter is the maintenance. We have incredibly pathetic maintenance where we've got the laddering of fuel. It's not the big, great, big, giant, 100-foot dead trees because you're not going to catch those guys on fire. It's the, it's the laddering <coughs> of the weeds. We got the, we got the fire, we got the rain, the weeds grow up, and now it's going to be quick. We're not going to have a fire at uh, 200 feet a minute. The fires we're going to have now are going to be 500 feet a minute. They're going to be extreme flashovers. So I just think it's time that we, we start. It's simply a recommendation. I would absolutely not consider having the city attorney look at a single item. Uh, we had an attorney that did all these other items, and as we went through them, it wasn't helpful. So rather than go ahead and have the city attorney look at anything, these are really policy decisions. I really think they all need to go to council. Council needs to pick and choose. They are policy decisions. They're not about anything else. Let the council decide if we give them 15 items and they take six, they have an opportunity to review, to, to review it to the city attorney. I don't want to spend the money to review 15 if we're only going to use six. And, and again, this is a, absolutely a council-driven decision. And so let's make sure we keep it there. So I don't want to spend any more time waiting for the attorney because that's not my job. It certainly isn't staff's job. That, that's certainly at the will and pleasure of the council. And so I would hope that we would make sure that when this gets sent to council, that we do have an adequate time. That seems to be the biggest problem. We don't have adequate time. We can't explain it. They can't ask questions. We have too many items on the agenda, so it jumps back and forth, and we don't seem to resolve issues. I think we can put this thing in a, in a good format, give them one or two back and forth sessions, and we can just yeah, but are you, end you, it. Are you not, you're not supporting the concept of dumping all of this on one agenda item oh no it's too okay. it's too right. big no okay. no 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 I, okay. what i'm saying is is if 
if, if we go to the roof and the acrylic and we want to go spark a ruster and we take the entire superstructure and we no longer have we have enclosed eaves that's a mouthful and it's a it's, yeah, it's by a itself, lot of a stuff discreet mouthful. by itself but yes. what i'm saying is when i said changes are inner changes are inner related i don't want to do the roof one time and the chimney one time and the and yeah. the acrylic yeah. lights yeah. one time yeah. and the soffits one time i want to do these things in a group so they can grab it they can look at the entire process see what that so you're, you're you're referencing item two. Yeah. Okay. And, and see what that part well, is. And to that end, and let them put it together and schedule over three or four meetings if that's what they need. Well, or let's assume it's one. It'll be so cogent, and there's not that much there is, but there isn't. That's a good. That's because I'm going to suggest that that these items be reordered, and be relative to priority. Item two is item one. Item four is item two. <clears throat> item six is number uh, item three. What? Yeah, priorities. I'm just making a suggestion on this, Bob. Item one is four. Item five is item five, and then item <clears throat> three is item is number six. It's a prioritization. Okay, uh, how it gets submitted because I think there's an inner speaking of interrelated. Okay, but it's also there's also the concept of prioritization from the perspective of what there's a seasonal issue, um, and also uh, as a, um, in, uh, a, a as perhaps an introduction to the overall Title IX, um, because that's uh, something that I'm going to unless the I'm going to assume unless the city attorney has some or your staff uh, report has some significant uh, um, that's you know not going to probably be examined in in detail there's quite a few changes but um, you know um, they can they can be glanced at and and absorbed I think perhaps uh, but still it's a little it's a l larger um, body than these other items um, uh, so um, do you have any? Do you want me to give you those? Uh, what, those? what item? What item is for now? Excuse me. One. What item is for? Item number four. It would be number two, in priority. All right. So we'll be going and discussing that next. Yes. After item one, which is the current item two. Okay. Okay. I mean, you're talking with the first item of priority is. Several changes relate to fire prevention and safety. Okay, then the next item should be an adoption of a written brush clearance procedure and process. Okay, number three would be a recommendation that the city council review and adopt the board's fire map. These are all fire related, very specifically. Okay, item number four would be the recommendation that the city adopt updates to the city's municipal code focused on Title IX. Okay, then after that, number five is that the city council adopt the GIS system that would be comprehensive. You know, I think most people look at GIS, unless they're kind of tech uh, or wonkish, they're going to look at that and go either, what is it or why are we looking at it? And, you know, it's either going to get kicked down the road, uh, continued, or it's going to be, yeah, sure, why not? I mean, what does it mean? Is there, is there a significant expense? And as you'd indicated in prior meetings when we, when we were discussing that, yeah, it could be. So it, that recommend, staff recommendation is going to be relied on very heavily. But the concept here is really adoption of whatever resources uh, fit within the city's budget. Okay? It's a, uh, it may be something that uh, can get, uh, you know, Expanded. It's been initiated, but uh, I don't think there's much uh, known adoption, and we're really focused elsewhere on the water system. So, which you know, I don't know if anybody re remembers, it blew up last week. Was it last week? Yeah, uh, Wednesday night or something like that. I don't know why, haven't you? That was a big hole. Um, um, in any case, and then item number six is that the city council will adopt revisions to the city building appeals board ordinance. And since that applies to us, we should be last in line anyway. It's not a, you know, those recommendations just uh, are, uh, I think, housekeeping, really. Mm -hmm. So, okay. 
since this is the document that we're here, here meeting about, really, um, is there uh, any further conversation? you want to address uh, any of the other items that are? Yes, I'd good. like to Go. address the new item one, okay. the old item four. Yes. Um, the city council caused to be adopted a written brush clearance procedure in process. Um, we really need to adopt some zones uh, close to what the Santa Barbara zone has for habitation and the zones in the uphill. And, and we have two current zones, you're in or you're out. Um, we know that laddering and elevation cause problems. We know that we've got some big lots <coughs> up on uh, Signal, and we know that we've got upper and lower Stewart Canyon. We know that we have from uh, Camp Comfort all the way around, where we've got some significant problems. And I'm hoping that I made the point, and I'm hoping that we will have some severity zones as the old number six talks about where we can have 300 foot clearances 100 foot is not adequate when we have 200 foot flames when we have more than 200 foot flames like we had with our last 80 mile an hour wind that 100 foot clearance is insignificant and we have some housekeeping issues so while i don't think we need a 300 foot clearance because we have it in most of the city I think there are some places where it really needs to apply. Well, we don't even have, we don't have 300 feet for five lots in width in a number of places in the city where we've got those 4,000 square foot lots. It's so small. But when we get to Signal, we get to Stewart Canyon, we get to Lower Ventura Street, which drops around Country Club to Comfort. Yeah, we need to have some different clearance zones. The other reason we need to have that is because we don't have a single hydrant between Camp Comfort and Persimmon Hill, which would be on the uh, east side. And uh, as you go on the west side of Ventura Street up until we get into the city. So we don't have a single hydrant. And so I think if, if we lack the fire suppression, we have to increase the clearance. Um, without, without fuel, the wind then becomes not an impact but you know so so we need to make sure that you recommend that we do that um even if we can't get the fire map through this is a real immediate severe issue because again we've got san anna's coming back and that that didn't burn the last time will burn sooner or later and it's closer to town we'll have less warning so that's my number one Chair, back to you. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, any issues with the, how um, these, uh, any of this these would be edited, words changed or otherwise? Are we still going to be on the same page? I have other issues if we're off of the number one, which is four. Go. Number just five, recommendation city adopt GIS. I would just please don't do anything about that. That's just irrelevant right now. What has happened is, is when we start talking about GIS, uh, Golden, uh, Golden State, holy moly. Um, Casitas has gone ahead and let out contracts for pipe replacement. It's already out. It's already on the website. I've looked at their contracts. And so they're actively seeking bids for pipe re replacement. And what I would ask the city to do is get a hold of Casitas, look at their engineering report, look at their GIS, look at the bid, take a look and get the as-built stuff once they start. And, and they're going to replace the two and a half inch and two and a half inch lines and the four inch and the wharf hydrants. And then all of the lines that we will have will actually end up being six inch lines with six inch upper structure hydrants. And so that should be about as, as GIS new as we need. As new as we need. And as they dig in there, they'll tell us where the sewer lines and the electric lines and the cable lines, and they should be able to, to let us know everything that's underground. So we should get a fresh start. So. You know, I'm all in for saving money, and so I would just, 
I would request that item five not be an issue um, at all on this pending review. Uh, well, we worked on it, Bob. I think we want to let the council fit and decide that one. Okay, so I, I, I would say, uh, do we do we need to vote on that? Yeah, I, I have a quick question. We, I would um, just one second. What, yeah. As far as vote, we can vote at the end of if yeah, we want to okay. move All or right. modify. But um, All right. I uh, I do think you know we can include that piece of analysis though that Casitas has recently moved forward. So we may well, want to yeah that, wait on that, that 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 kind of um, uh, data. You're right. Right. Uh, uh, digital data, I think, is is something that the that that there it, it should be free from Casitas. And as such, um, that could be incorporated as a low cost uh, uh, element in the cities because uh, it's, it's nice to rely on other folks for their um, data, but having just uh, had an experience where um, the, uh, a water district knew where uh, Edison's um, lines ran um, when Edison didn't, uh, caused me to take a different look on data. So um, who's got it matters. Can I say something? Yes, absolutely. I think that the GIS system is important because it's not only about the fire water system. It's more than that. And that's what the fire department told us when they were here. It's knowing what individual properties have, what's going on in the property. If they knew that, it would, cu it would cut their expense and time tremendously. If a, if a property owner stays on the property when there's a fire, he can be very helpful, but if he's not there, they don't know where maybe the petroleum lines run, or it's not just the fire water system that we need the GIS for. I think the city should look into adopting that. That's my opinion. It's, it's well, and, and I don't have a problem adopting it, but, but let's get all the raw data first, because that will shortcut the end result, because yes, it will exactly. have already been done. Exactly. And so, you know, include that in the, uh, in the staff report, if you will, as uh, a means of achieving a, uh, an adoption, a first step, whatever, okay? Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be, uh, you know, comprehensive up to date, uh, you know, up, uh, uh, you know, powered up with, uh, with uh, some staff assigned to it even. No, that's not what we're saying. It's, it's just, this is, this is part of being prepared. Yeah, you know, the city council um, gave us five, uh, you know, questions, basically um, tasks. tasks or yes. recommendations and we come back with them. But um, prior to them looking at this, is there any way that we could possibly meet with city council? And on the, dis you know, I don't know, I think the planning commission, don't they meet with them once in a while and discuss particular is issues? What's wrong with us not meeting with city council at prior to their meeting, regular meeting or whatever, and addressing these and hashing them over and more more answering some of their questions that they may have yeah I, I know uh, so just to answer part of your question is that right now um, each of the commissions meet with the council typically once a year I think the Planning Commission is the only one that meets twice a year mm -hmm. um, and I know that that's been discussed before about the possibility of having one with the BAB I would need to check with um, the, the city manager and the mayor as they set the agenda, so that's something I could ask about um, moving forward. The one, the one kind of concern I have as I'm thinking this through is uh, I have the date, you know, tentatively scheduled or, uh, you know, locked in for um, that first meeting in November, so I don't want to do anything that risks, you know, if we say we want to meet mm -hmm. first and they can't meet till December or January, I don't want to push these things back, uh, but I can request that. Uh, I will note that I think another commission has the joint meeting with council on the first meeting in November already. It's the Arts Commission, I believe. You know, yeah, and, and I've been on this committee, what, five years, six years? Yeah. And uh, I know there's been changes on city council, and I, I haven't met with any of them. Yeah. Nor has our committee. I can raise the issue, and maybe, maybe it would be a case where we take this and then maybe right. following that have a follow-up meeting or something, but... You know, Tom. Because there was a lot of time and effort. <laughs> Be careful what yeah. you wish for. Tom, right. Tom um, right. I don't know if you consider this. Uh, I would like this proposal and things to go through. I think the most important time to meet with them would be after 
they've had a chance to look at the project, chance to look at the staff report, chance to understand it, and then meet with them so then they can directly ask subsequent questions, which is why is this important or, or, or when does this come in or you know, help us understand why you think this is even a, a necessity. Because by that time, what's going to happen is that this thing is going to be narrowed down to the focus that they determine that they're willing to take a look at, and then it's not so broad and time-consuming. Yeah, open up a dialogue with them. I mean, they can meet us, we meet them, even though we know them, but uh, show them, particularly the mayor, that we are doing something. By that point, it should be a desiccated, uh, <laughs> maybe be a different reduced... Mayor. Yeah. One thing we might want to skeleton of think former. one thing the the BAB may want to consider is making a recommendation to do that and including that on this list. Um, you know, a recommendation that to have a yearly meeting with the council and the BAB. Yeah. I I don't know how the other staff members I mean the board feels about that, but I would be an opportunity for one or more city council to be on vacation. Okay. <laughs> so very good. I, you know, I'm, you know, I think we'd all just. Uh, are we well, ready no, for no, no, I'm item three? Let's move. What exactly it is we do or have done, or you know, or if you know, if there's any interest in that. Otherwise, it'll be a very short meeting. <laughs> and I'm for short meetings. Are we ready to go to discussion item three? Uh, absolutely. Discussion item. We don't need a, 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 a motion to accept the reschedule. No, he said at the end we'd vote oh, for okay. changes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, then I'm going to ask the chair a question <coughs> in the discussion. In the first four paragraphs, I see where we have a partnership with the Green Coalition. We're looking at resources with the Green Coalition. We're looking at outreach and partner to the Green Coalition for recommendations. What are those? Because I haven't seen what they are uh, specifically. Uh, maybe I'm not paying attention. I don't know if they've been presented to James. I don't know if they've been presented to the council. But if it involves Title IX, I really think that we, and there's there's another one on the other page. If it involves Title IX, um, here's the other one, James. I, I have, thank uh, you. Uh, I, I would think that um, we could certainly use the help by having them turn over the reports or discussion or what they're doing, when the deliverables are, and, and, and what they're looking at. Um, I would certainly like to see that. And make sure that we're steering this thing in the right course. So uh, if we could get some information as to what that is is happening, because yeah. it, it, it appears that this is included in what we're doing, so. Yeah, I can, okay. I think I can give you a, like a brief summary of that in that, um, so when the Planning Commission made water uh, conservation recommendations to council, a couple of them were to, um, promote more public outreach of water conservation and uh, create a web page with links and things like that. And it was recommended, I think, by the council, but if not by the, uh, or I think by planning commission, but if not by the council, to um, use some of the links and public resources that the Green Coalition has already available. They have a water conservation page, they have videos, all these things. So, um, that is what's referred to in, in the um, water conservation uh, staff report. It, basically, there was three main things. One was to um, work together to create some resources like uh, videos and brochures to post, um, to be able to use some of their information on our website. And then the third was to um, start, like kickstart the, um, the community garden project, which is a pending uh, pending task, but that's the third on the list. So they're, I would say that their, um, you know, partnership with us is focused on pretty much those three tasks okay. for water so conservation. It, so it wouldn't go on as on page two of three to include um, mandatory requirements for energy code. 
No. Low flow, any of those type of actual Title IX no. and components. I, I just wanted to make sure because it, it appeared that it ran together that these are actually separate components. Right. What I intended to say was this is the stuff we're working on with PC and Green Coalition, and, and then this is the stuff, the plumbing upgrades, gray water, that I think the BAB would be interested in working on. So I, I tried to kind of divide those two things out. When we get into this, it, it's almost like somebody's come up with a formula or has come up with a predetermined um, conclusion. And I'm concerned with some of the conclusions because on-demand water heaters are not water efficient. We have more natural gas than we can burn in a thousand years. We have a few uh, more years of water in the lake. And so I'm really not all uh, fired up about on-demand water heaters and these things. And I'm just kind of looking at these things. And I'm trying to determine when we talk about plumbing upgrades where or who authors things that would say require on-demand water heaters. Recirculating pumps are the best thing we can do for water. On-demand is the best thing we can do for energy. I don't think that energy right now is a concern with uh, the fact that we're having to burn flare gas like crazy. We, we can't even get rid of it. So I kind of, I don't know how that comes in there. And then it, it makes some other assumptions. Um, so this is actually the exact conversation I was hoping we'd have, but I will note that's the next item on the agenda. So I, I think if we can try to close out. Um, that's fine. Let's go back. The, the BAB recommendations. Okay. So any further comments? So at, at this point, we're um, going to the... Um, we need a motion to um, uh, uh, to implement certain edits to the Building Appeals Board recommendations as provided in the staff report. Um, a resequencing um, edits relative to uh, um, recommended revisions being a descriptor for what the Building Appeals Board's recommendations have are comprised of or in substance. Um, I'd also like on item number four on the agenda here uh, for uh, attachment of patch, attachment A, uh, page one of one, item number four, second line where it, it says, where, whereby the city will compel compliance by property owners by June 30th. Um, uh, how about cooperation and compliance of property owners? Because the first... It's a, it's a request before it becomes a mandatory. Um, Chair? Yes. How about notification and explanation? Because if we come up with a different clearing requirement, people are not going to know what they are. I think we're going to have to let them know that if you're on upper signal or certain areas, the old 100 feet, if we can get that through, is not adequate. It's now 300 okay. in certain areas. Let them let them know. Let them understand. Uh, I just I don't like to go in and just be heavy handed and say okay. we're going to do so things. So how would you how would you how would you phrase it? You want well, no, notify. Well, I would uh, notify notify and explain current requirements in that area. Okay. And. And then that way everybody knows what that's going to be. Make sure that we give them a 60-day head start because if you're going to have a hard June 30 like the fire department, that thing needs to be a hard April 30. Okay, so, okay we'll noti notify and explain current clearance requirements Okay. with a 60-day lead time. Okay, so where in this I, item number four do you want to inject those, partic those particular I'm phrases? Gonna, you know what, I, staff is the one that rewrites all these things. Okay, you, okay. And well, I, I would think that our staff can do that adequately. 
Okay, so include that. Okay, all right. We'll add, That's fine. Yeah, that okay. works. Good enough. All right. And James, is that a problem, or does that seem to be unfair? Or you can always. Oh, that makes sense. To whenever we change something, I just don't want to change it, and it's done, and then we notice them, and right. that's just not fair. They're not doing anything wrong. They're just unaware of the fact that there will be requirements that change. Agreed. Okay. All right. Anything else? Okay. So, so we're not adding any additional recommendations to what was previously on? Correct? Oh, no. I think okay. you have a, enough on this particular plate for several side dishes. Got it. <laughs> okay. So, um, all right. Do anyone want, like to uh, make a motion? Well, do you, do you want to spell out? what these are. I want to make sure I got them right, that number two becomes number one. Okay, I'll, I'll do it again. Number two becomes number one. Um, number four becomes number two. Okay. Number six becomes number three. Okay. Number one becomes number four. Okay. And number five remains number five, uh -huh. and number three becomes number okay. six. Thanks. That's the way I got it. Right. We're going to make a motion. Did Bob leave? Okay. I caught, he had, you know, drove him from the room. It was too much. Um, <laughs> okay. So shall we wait until soft. he comes back? Yeah, we have to. So we're going to have to take a um, brief uh, break. Break, I guess, um, until he comes back. Are you ready for the motion? Okay. I didn't think you'd be done. Now, now that we have a, uh, we've returned to. You've the, always had a quorum. Yes, I know that, but you know, it was, it's, it's a, a super quorum. Okay, so a motion. Um, a motion for the reorder and edit of the recommendations. Um, all in favor? I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No. No. Okay. Item number three. Uh, Chair, before we go to item three, uh, we've had at least one guest come in, a uh, community uh, member, and maybe it would be appropriate to ask again if anybody has anything they'd like to discuss. Are, are there any members of the public which w who would like to make comment on item two, item three, or in general? Not just a public comment. Okay. Okay. Very good. In that case, item discussion item number three. Um, subject is discuss recommendations for water conservation me measures throughout the city. Um, the recommendation that is that the Building Appeals Board discuss water conservation measures and consider recommending items to City Council for implementation or further investigation. So, absolutely, please. Thank you. So uh, at the last um, BAB meeting, we had started to discuss some um, water conservation uh, measures because the item had just come back to council from the Planning Commission. And so um, we had a, um, I think we had a heavier agenda at the last meeting, or we had an item that was lengthy, um, one of those two. But so we decided that we would bring this back this month to, to look at a little closer. And so just, um, one of the, the points we try to make is um, 
this item has gone recently to the planning commission and the planning commission gave a bunch of possible recommendations and, and uh, as board member daddy pointed out some of them you know perhaps maybe the bab would agree or would not agree with and so i tried to identify um, the recommendations that i felt fall within you know building um, and uh, so those are the ones listed here you know plumbing upgrades gray water um, uh, and and those um, because I think the um, they really do fall under the building and the BAB and I wanted to point those out in case the BAB had any recommendations or wanted to further discuss uh, one of the ideas we had was we could do um, perhaps at the next BAB meeting you know if, if the board is interested in gray water we can do kind of an in-depth um, explanation of what exactly you know it is and what the process would be to start kind of getting that out and um and uh, uh or if there's other you know ideas that the bab wanted to focus on but the so the issue or the item before you is essentially the some of the water measures that have come up that fall under the bab but it also allows for the bab to make you know other recommendations or ask for you know further information on some of these so um, chair, without being a stick in the mud, um, I think these are policy decisions. Gray water is legal in the state of California. The equipment and the process and the permits are in place. So this is not a matter of can we do it? It's it's already done by the state. I think it's a matter of, I'm not sure what the question is, so I'll, I'll pose a question, which is shall all new developments like the, you know, I, I hate to single this out, but we have a large project where they may want to put in 20 or 30, uh, a unit uh, new motel. And so should they be charged with 100% of landscape by gray water use because Lord knows they have an abundance. And I would think what my thought process is, is sure we can do that, we can you know make it in the code, we can find out which chapter. I really think all this is policy decision. Is this something that the city wants to implement? If they do, then I'd like to have it back for a discussion and say, hey, here's how we can do it. We can do recirculating water. We can do no flush urinals. We can do make them put into gray water because they, they do have a way to make that stuff usable. You know, we can we can do all that stuff. But I think this is a discussion. It, and, and I remember my friend Carlon Strobel saying, hey, before you go off and do all this stuff and give it to us, how about asking us if we want to do it to start with? And then if we say yes, then come up with a suggestion and tell us what you think instead of selling it to us right out of the box. And I think this is, I'm not saying anybody's selling anything, um, but I think this is a policy question of should we require a fairly a, a large amount of expenses for people to have pre-solar wiring for people to do other things um, I know that water is getting critical and I, I understand but I think it's up to the city to tell us how critical and how much they want to squeeze this thing down and we can certainly do it we can do it just We'll get after it. You know that. We'll read everything there is. We'll have the meetings. We'll get it done. And we can turn around the recommendations with everything in 45 days. But I kind of think that this is, uh, I think this is a bridge too far for us at this level. So that's my two cents. Okay. Anyone else? Makes sense. I, I, I see. Well, from um, also, I have to say, from I'm not exactly sure why. I must have missed it, but there was um, why the city's involved so much in water conservation. I, I, I recall that having been one of the pet product, pro, not not water conservation per se, but water conservation, uh, you know, creating an educational landscape garden features, uh, a website. Um, you know, most of this is dealt with by the water agencies. They've got a plethora of conservation. 
um, options, links, uh, um, you know, uh, the, the, the information here regarding the, and it's interesting that City of Mission Viejo offered permit fee waivers for their residents if they installed solar panels on their homes and also um, did not charge residents for their swimming pool demo permits because um, uh, I don't, you know, that doesn't, I don't know, maybe down in that zone. I, they I would recommend that. I've had clients call me about demos for pools. I, I think if the city council would go for that, uh, I think they should offer it up. Well, we have we a have, lot of people. Uh, any idea what a, um, a, a demo permit, a pool demo permit would cost approximately? Okay, so that's, you know, but I would submit that <laughs> anyone that was, anyone was breaking, you know, was, was removing their decking, coping, uh, electricity, uh, the, the pool equipment ascent, uh, ostensibly, burying everything, uh, and then filling it with uh, uh, gravel and uh, with a, uh, a soil cap uh, is probably 150 bucks would, would perhaps be good for their dinner when they were all over it <laughs> to celebrate uh, how much money they really spent. Uh, so, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it's the thought that counts, clearly. All I'm saying is I am kind of agree with that a lot of this, this, you know, the city's involvement in water conservation and going into um, the concept of uh, uh, point of sale on resi uh, residential transactions, uh, it's getting real complicated to be a realtor, isn't it? Um, uh, you know, and, and I agree, uh, rel also relative to on-demand water heaters, that that was something that showed up at a, a few planning uh, commission meetings, and it was like I kept looking at that going, Is, that's Title IX. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's really, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice thought, but, you know, once again, as, as board member Daddy clarified, you, you really do have to understand what your intentions are, are uh, you know, and even in a commercial development, um, you know, there's there's a purpose there, but um, uh, on-demand water heaters certainly, with limitless hot water, are certainly not water conserving. Just, you know. Um, so, and, 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 and once again, gray water is within the, well, already well established within the purview of the, by the state, and uh, local agencies have plenty of of, of guidance in that regard of what they can issue. I don't think the, uh, the local, the county health departments are even involved in, in that as they are with, you know, reclaimed and cross-connection issues. So I don't know why uh, uh, really um, my perspective is why, why this city, I don't, don't, don't you staff guys have all, and women already have enough to do? Um, you know, this is, you know, I mean, it, it sounds good, but it's not, I don't think that's particularly productive. Um, so, and again, my point was, if the council wishes to take this community into repurposing gray water, because we are going to be in a water deficit from here on out. Going to be. We will get this done in a turnaround, and we will do the best job we can, make all the recommendations right now. But I think what we need is we need. The Council go. guidance. Okay. No. We need the go from them because, again, it's it's not us to give the council more work. Would, and, and would more we tasks. would would we like? A, is there a, a resolution lurking about this? You mean a motion? Yeah, I'll make motion. a resolution that uh, we we at least have have it f somehow staff forwarded to the council and see if the council wishes to have this or any other items explored that we can assist them with within the purview of Title IX. Is that your motion? Yes. Just a resolution, right? Resolution. Whatever. Motion. He's, he's motioning. Yeah. I he's, think he's motioning. He's, well, should I second it? I will. Okay. okay. Why don't you? All right. Uh, and uh, roll call? Yes. Chair Ulrich? Yes. Uh, Member Daddy? Yes. Member Murphy? Yes. Member Farmer? Yes. And myself, yes. I should, I should perhaps ask that was clear enough for you to, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. All right, so um, that is the uh, third and last discussion item. Building Appeals Board Liaison Report. Council Member Blatz, do you have some commentary, trenchant or otherwise, that you'd like to impart no, uh, or share with us? I have no particular words of wisdom for anybody tonight, but it's nice to see everybody. 
Uh, you were talking about uh, having never had a joint meeting with the council as we have with other commissions. Once I think we did. Mm -hmm. I was mayor when this, this board was formed and this is the first time I've been a liaison. Hmm. And I'm going to be liaison this month <laughs> and in November. And then I'll be gone in December. Perfect. And probably if they keep the liaisons the way they are, Ryan will be here on <laughs> in December. So that's, that's very interesting. Um, yeah, since the inception of the Building Appeals Board, there's been all kinds of, you know, comments as to what you guys do all kinds of comments whether you're needed all kinds of comments of why we have you and i've never quite understood it because i happen to think that you serve a very important purpose and when it comes to everything that you've looked at from title nine it's just incredible so i appreciate everything you've done i can tell you this that in terms of title nine issues when it comes to uh building i think that that the council had a presentation last night uh, from a water consultant that we have about all of the sources of water <clears throat> and how many acre feet per year, even in the, the drought years, we could obtain by, by capturing some of the water. And it was a good presentation, I thought. But it talked about how much water is hitting our roofs and how much water we would be able to uh, harvest from that. And there may be some sort of building code in order to accomplish the capture of that water or something, uh, or permeable surfaces or whatever the case might be. That's the only, so when it comes back to us, I hope that's the direction they ask you to look at, because I don't know if there's any special things when it comes to roofing materials or, or anything other than gutters that go into, into some sort of underground pools for irrigation or anything. So that might be, that would be of interest to me, and I would think that you guys could look at that. But other than that, I'm not. I you know when you get get a direction, can, can water conservation. I'm not sure exactly what that means. I think it's more capturing and utilizing water rather than conserving. How much more can we conserve? Yeah, you know, when you look at it. Well, I think the. Um concept of gray water which once again the yeah. state has given uh -huh. us purview and that's guidance right. and, and and enough enough of a framework is really that's wringing the the most benefit out of the resource before mm -hmm. it uh, it goes someplace else one way or another and uh, yeah, really that's as, pretty pretty simple as board member daddy said the the council has to come back and say we're going to insist that every new construction has gray water then it can, you guys can get it back and decide how, we're, how you're going to implement that yeah but you can't make the decision, okay, we're going to start requiring it on because it's not your, your job to do that. Same thing with rooftops. We want to capture all the, roof, all, all the water hitting the rooftops. Well, then it can come back to you, and you can figure out what building interests would be able to do that. So I think it should come back to the council. She also mentioned but, condensation from yeah, air conditioners and air refrigerators, and I don't know how we capture that either. I don't know. I guess that, it could be done. That really isn't that much. No. She well, it amounted it was a to lot. three or four hundred acre feet. Yeah, she said it was quite a bit. Year. I, mean, um, I didn't think it was that much. When we're only using twenty two hundred acre feet, I think we're using less. But they, she said twenty two hundred. But that was in the yeah, it goes larger down the drain, than the city. Literally. Mm -hmm. So even if even if we're using a larger area than just the city, if that area is using twenty two hundred acre feet, that's more than ten percent we get from right. condensation. Yeah, I was surprised. Yeah, I was really surprised. So those are the kinds of things to look at. Did you have a question, Jean? It, it just No, not a question, but it seems to me, f from my vantage point, the amount of water that is running down the gutter and off to the ocean is much larger. And, you know, it's not a building issue, but I think it's something that the city could easily take into their own responsibility okay. area and, and make some changes. And we are. We've got a couple of studies going on on how we can capture that and and not have it run into the into the sewer system and down I, the hill. Uh, I bumped into I didn't bump into somebody. Somebody had a air conditioning leak in a inside, and we got to talking about their property. They have a twenty thousand gallon underground cistern that was put in this older property years mm. ago. 
up in the hills. I guess we've got a number of them. Um, you know, that's how Bahamas and that's how the, the islands in the Caribbean, they don't have any pipes and they don't have any rivers. And that's all rain. And so it's all captured. I was in Belize. Everybody captures roof water mm -hmm. into a containment tank. Even if we don't drink it like they do, we can certainly slowly release it. And since 80% of our water is irrigation, not internal use, um, you know, we can always say, hey, you can water your lawn as much as you can capture. That's right. And no more. And so, you know, then again, these are all policy decisions. Do what you folks need to do, and we will we'll get it done for you. That's all I can Well, say. I know there's a lot of interest because we've got the Carnegie Mellon study going on, which is capturing rainwater. We had the, the study that was given the presentation to that's been through one phase and half of another phase and has one phase to go. So I know that the council's paying a lot of attention to it. And we have the the water manager position or whatever this individual's well, that's going to be looking into those kinds of things as well, I think. Anything uh, of me? Yeah, I want to thank you for all your service because uh, we may not be meeting the rest of this year. Well, if you don't meet for the rest of the year, I won't see you again. So just let me say thank you for your hard work. Oh, and thank you for if what you If you're here do. next month, I'll be here. So thank you very much. I, I, I honestly can't tell you how much I appreciate the hard work you do. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. Have a long list. <laughs> so um, yes, yes. So at this point, um, I believe that that is the planning commission oral report. There isn't uh, uh, Commissioner Corbin with us, so so we're going to adjourn this meeting at uh, seven twenty-five. So did you drop off the sheet in my office today? No, I. Asked the list of tickets, and I, think, I thought we were in your office. I think you took it to your house. Oh, I just happened to home today. Okay, I left at seven o'clock this morning. <laughs>